Well, I'm getting an early start today. All systems ready to go. It's um, 7 a.m. here in California, and I woke up early this morning and decided it was a great opportunity to try and get some real time in on the game today. I'm hoping, so we'll see how that plays out. Um, all right. Let's uh, get everything going here. Open galaxy map. Set a cartography. All right, calculating our our route to Colonia, which is where we're headed. Close the map. Closing the map. So we have. How many jumps? All right, looks like 344 jumps to get there. On the right side here under modules, you can see where we're at. Um, and gradually, things are going to start working here. Um, got everything running that I need, right? Disabled my cannons yesterday, which should uh, give me a little more, a little more energy when I need it for uh, whatever. And uh, let's see, we got a 33 light year jump on that one, and my current um, current jump range is about 33 and a half light years. I've got uh, a couple of. Uh, escape pods that I picked up that I'll drop off when I get to where I'm going unless I find something better um, but uh, you know doing my civic duty here to try and save uh, people I found them on a on a planet way out in the middle of nowhere like 12,000 light years away from everything and uh, okay and before we get going here Let's uh, review our progress. So, um, let's see. On uh, yesterday, I made uh, two million two hundred forty-one thousand four hundred and eleven credits, and you can see how that compares to each previous day. Um, let's see. I hit fourteen systems and traveled four hundred and fifty-three light years. And I'm really shooting for at least 500 a day. I haven't been able to achieve that because of interruptions or uh, other obligations that I had. So getting an early start today, I have a feeling we're going to do pretty well in, in that regard. Um, yeah. Um, the, the other thing here is the uh, travel map. This is all part of ED Discovery. So this is my current location right now, and uh, if I back up a little bit, you can see kind of where I am in the galaxy. This down here is the bubble, and um, my home base right here in Sawahane. You can't see it at that zoom level. So um, just a quick recap. I left Sawahane with, uh, the, with a passenger on board to collect data which we did right up at this location here. I collected the data and uh, then started back. And when we got to this point on the return leg, I bumped into a planet a little too hard for my clients, um, for, for my client's satisfaction. And so they gave me 20 minutes to drop them off at the nearest starport. <laughs> Well, I was 12,000 light years away from the nearest starport, and uh, so they just, uh, they did the unexpected thing, or at least I've never seen this before, they just jumped off the ship. Uh, right on the planet that I was sitting on, I was parked on a planet, they jumped the ship, and surprisingly there were no escape pods, so I couldn't recover their pods even, they were just gone. Five passengers, gone. So I decided, uh, well, I might as well just accept that. I've lost 18 million credits that I would have earned just for that trip alone, plus the reputation increase that that would have gotten me. 
So um, I decided, hey, look, I'm 12,000 light years away from home, and I'm also 12,000 light years away from Colonia. Let's see if I can get up into Colonia here. So that green line that you see there is the the rough course, I guess this is the Colonia area here. Uh, yeah. So you can see this is, I mapped myself to the uh, um, um, to the Colonia Nebula here, and then I'll start checking out that system. Uh, there's the green line, and uh, I've got a very long way to go to get there from where I currently am, which is right here. And uh, yeah, so I um, that's the, the course that I'm plotting. I have plotted, and then the uh, galaxy map, of course, is uh, the actual course, and that is uh, shown here on the red line, uh, my current progress along my actual course. So um, that's that's me in a nutshell. Um, I've got uh, these uh, different graphic images that I use, and I'm basically scanning um, uh, with my advanced discovery scanner and then going farther into the systems that look interesting with the detailed surface scanner and gathering as much data as I can. I figure that will earn me a lot of credits and gain me a lot of experience at the same time. And I'm really um, concentrating on trying to learn how to identify um, you know, what in a system is worth scanning, how to tell what kind of a planet or a star they are, and so I've been using these images to help me do that. Um, some of the more interesting ones that I've really been focusing on lately, because I find these are quite useful, are these silhouette images that appear next to the uh, uh, next to the uh, radar, uh, you know, in your ship, uh, whenever you select a planet. <clears throat> so I've been focusing um, in the last day or two on um, trying to memorize these patterns and know what I'm looking for. And I also uh, came across this guy here. In fact, I'm going to just slide this over. Um, is it, I want, want one more over. I'd like these two to kind of be side by side so that I can just go back and forth between them. And this will help me to identify various different star classes uh, and where the habitable zone falls uh, relative to uh, that class of star. So if I, for example, uh, you know, run into a high metal content planet, which could also uh, be terraformable, um, you know, or a water world, or a, 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 a rocky body um, that might have the, uh, the capacity to be terraformed, I can tell much better about that just by looking at the host star class, looking at the where the habitable zone should fall and the range, and then I can look at the uh, distance of those uh, those bodies from the host star and make an, a more educated guess as to where they, whether or not they're going to be terraformable or uh, you know habitable Earth-like planets, that kind of thing. So this is really mostly for my own education. Um, uh, you know, and then there's various different ways. Uh, there's this graphic that I found uh, all through Google, and if I see a, a shape that uh, is interesting to me, I can look it up. Like, for example, NGC 6357, which I found is also uh, known as the Lagoon Nebula. Uh, and I, you know, looked it up, NGC 6357, and found out of that name. So again, I'll, I'm getting more familiar with some of the more interesting objects uh, uh, and uh, nebulas and uh, you know black holes and you know things like that. 
Um, so this is all experience that I'm going to fall back on so that by the time I'm done with this journey, which is a, I'm still far from done, uh, I've got about uh, 12,000 or so light years to go to get to um, the Colonia system. I'll spend some time there. Probably will sell my data that I've already gathered just so that I can get my name officially put on all these first discoveries. 602 systems that I, uh, you know, have unofficially uh, the first discovery rights on. But once I sell the data, of course, my name will really go on them. So I'll probably sell that data in the Colonia area, and then um, I'll have about a 21,000 light year. Uh, a journey back to uh, Sawahim, my home base. I'm using uh, Toolwise um, ED Discovery, which uh, we've looked at here, and that includes the ED Discovery uh, travel map here. And uh, in addition to that, I'm also using Captain's Log. And uh, I use that to kind of see what kind of scan data I've, I'm gathering. It gives me all kinds of great information about uh, the various different minerals, whether it's landable, um, gas giant types. It gives me all the information over here, like if I click on this, it tells me that this is a gas giant with ammonia-based life, or this one here, an icy body, and I can look and see what uh, it has and what these designations mean. It's very handy. Uh, not to mention the fact that I can see what percentages of all of these different things uh, are there. So um, this is really kind of a learning experience for me. I've been uh, playing Elite Dangerous now for almost two years. Uh, copy this so I can paste it in when I come across systems that have uh, high amounts of jumponium. That would be uh, basic, uh, standard, or uh, premium um, um, minerals that you can harvest and then use to improve your jump range. So, um, yeah, this is just all the stuff that I'm doing. And I, I figure by the time I get back, I will be, um, you know, pretty experienced with the basics of, of, uh, of exploration, uh, deep space exploration. Uh, one of the things that uh, I don't have right now, unfortunately, is an SRV. And that's because uh, when I was uh, at this location here, this is where I decided to change course um, and head off towards um, Colonia. I landed on a planet and for whatever reason, um, uh, I lost, let's see, do I have that there or is that here? Um, yeah. Um, I also lost my SRV here. Uh, I was sitting in my SRV on a stable planet, planetary surface. Uh, by stable, I mean it was level. Um, and of course, there was no traffic anywhere. I haven't seen anybody in 12,000 light years. And um, so I, I set my emergency brake. I had some shopping I needed to do, so I just left everything on, um, went out to do my shopping. I came back a couple hours later and found myself sitting back in the pilot seat of my ship, which is an ASP Explorer, by the way, and uh, my SRV was gone. So I must have died and respawned. I don't know what killed me or how I died, why I lost the SRV, but basically I'm vehicleless as far as planetary roaming goes. So I'm going to have to wait until I get to uh, Jacques Station or somewhere in Colonia. I'll buy another SRV there. And then when I make that 23, uh, uh, 22, 21,000, sorry, 21,000 light year journey back home, I'll be making a lot of stops, not only uh, scanning um, and collecting detailed surface scan data, but also collecting minerals. Um, so that's kind of what's on my mind. The, um, I guess the last thing I should mention here is that um, 
Well, I have a few other references here that I can learn from spectral star class types, um, uh, gas giant classifications, and then, of course, the uh, uh, Elite Dangerous Beyond uh, update, which is coming out this year. In fact, uh, this is February the 9th, uh, Friday, February 9th. So this is the very last day of the public beta of Chapter 1 of uh, Season 3 Beyond. And I am expecting, based upon rumors that have been circulating out there, that they will actually release it sometime, um, sometimes this month, and presumably sometime within the next week or, or so, maybe 10 days. So once that uh, comes out, there's going to be a lot of uh, quality of life enhancements that will be made available that are particularly useful for um, explorers. Uh, brand new graphics, uh, improved graphics, better planetary, uh, planetary um, uh, image maps for the surfaces of the planets uh, as viewed from space. And then later on, uh, they expect in Q4 of this year, uh, they'll be coming out with even more uh, graphical improvements and surface feature improvements, uh, dramatic ones apparently. Uh, and so it looks to me like this Season 3 Beyond has, uh, has put a lot of focus, um, thank God, on quality of life and the things that you can do as an explorer. There's, of course, lots of other things that are um, in there, engineering improvements, planetary uh, a materials trader, uh, new changes to crime and punishment, just all this stuff, trade data changes, lots and lots of changes coming this year. Um, and a bunch of them will be showing up here in Q1, so that's something I'm looking forward to. All right, um, I guess that pretty much covers everything. I brought every everybody watching this who's never uh, seen any of my videos before up to speed, so now you know, and it's time for us to hit the road again. And we've got a new system uh, ready to go to. speed ahead 100% make the jump make the jump preparing for jump The scan. Update System map. System cartography. All right, what have we here? Hmm. High metal content there for sure. Close the map. Closing map. Let's check distances and see how far one has to travel in this system to see it all. Hey, that's not bad. Okay, let's go ahead and scan this system. 25% engaged.
Full speed ahead. Maximum velocity engaged. All right, now judging from this um, silhouette here to the left, that is telling me that this is either a high metal content or a rocky world. And uh, let me drop my okay, speed here. Okay, 50% engaged. So let's just, uh, let's see if we can't figure out. Sir. System map. System map. Okay, so this is, its distance from the star is 20.05 light seconds and the star class itself is an M-class star. So based on that, M-class stars so yes, this could be in a habitable zone. It's uh, greater than this and it's less than that. So it's probably somewhere right in, you know, right kind of down here. So it's going to be fairly close. It is a high metal content. That's according to um, Captain's Log, but unfortunately that one was not terraformable. Close the map. Closing map. All right. Uh, let's go on to the next one here, shall we? Yep. All right. So we're already getting scan data on this one. Now this, I believe that this is a. Um, I can't remember. I should recognize that. Um, that one is this one here, which is a high metal content world. And system map, open system map. System map. Its distance is uh, 34.43 light seconds. And that means that it should also have that potential for being terraformable. But unfortunately, it is not. So, um, okay, close the map. Close the map. Close the map. And uh, let's move on. That's kind of the procedure that I'm using, and hopefully I'll memorize this stuff in time. Uh, this um, symbol is a high metal content, I believe, from that image, and it, oh yeah, high metal content or rocky body. It's kind of encompassed in both. So it has the potential also for being terraformable. Um, but in this case, it was just a rocky body. So it fell into the rocky body category today. All right. On to the next one. Full speed ahead. Maximum drive. Uh, this is a high metal content or rocky body. System map. System cartography. Its distance from the host star is 61.36. And so that's also well within range. Could potentially be habitable. Close the map, but it's not. Closing map. Sorry hasn't started scanning yet, okay. Fifty percent speed. So this could be high metal content or rocky. Let's see what we get. So it all shows up there in that top panel. 
just high metal content. Those are still reasonably valuable, but uh, not nearly as valuable as when it's a uh, terraformable, of course, or a grid like world. 25, sir. Let's get this data here without rushing into the planet. Again, high metal content here, but not terraformable. Okay. Full speed ahead. Maximum velocity engaged. All right. Now this, I remember, was a rocky body. Pretty sure, right? Am I remembering correctly? Rocky body. No, high metal content. That's a high metal content symbol. System map. System map. And its distance from the host star is 109, so it should still be in range, right? Close the map. Closing map. Let's go back over here. Yeah, see, that should still be in range. Oh, overshot this one. So we'll just swing back around. All this going back and forth is a little risky that way, isn't it? Be better to have all these things memorized. So this is going to be a high metal content world, potentially terraformable. High metal content, but not terraformable. All right. Full speed ahead. 100%. All right, high metal content again. System map. System map. System cartography. And it's 183, so it's getting right near the edge where 200 is kind of the outbound limit. So this could also be terraformable. Close the map. Closing map. Understood. 50%. So we'll see what we get here. Well, high metal content, but uh, not terraformable. All right. So we're getting farther out here. We're going to run into more and more ice-like worlds, which are not going to be terraformable, but most of those are landable. Full speed ahead. Maximum drive. Now, this symbol I know is an ice world symbol. I'm very familiar with those. Those are not terraformable, so it's mostly just um, for mineral gathering. So we'll see what kind of minerals we'll get off of that. If you look here, you can see that so far some of these high metal content worlds are also you know have minerals in them. Um, so I'm going to gather all of these anyway, even though they're not high value. And the reason that I'm doing that, well, twofold reasons. One is vanity. I like the idea of seeing my name on everything, owning a system, so to speak. It's maybe just an, uh, kind of an amateur <laughs> aspiration, maybe the more experienced guys who scanned, scanned. Who scanned thousands of uh, planetary systems are not so impressed with seeing their name there, but that's not me. I've only got a little over 600 systems under my belt so far. All right, so 
So this is another icy body that we're coming up on here. Full speed ahead. Maximum size. Here, in the middle of the screen there, that blotch out in space, that is the Andromeda Galaxy. I had to look that up online. I couldn't tell what that splotch was. 100%. The reason for that is, is we're now moving further out into the system. System map. System map. You can see the farther out you get, the colder it gets, the farther you get away from the sun. And so, let's see, it's 109 light seconds, so that could still be... But these are all ice worlds. 183, we're getting right on the edge there. Okay, that would definitely not be. And of course, this is the one that we're looking at right now, which is going to be a gas giant. And uh, judging by that image, close the map. Close the map. Closing the map. Judging by that image, we're looking at a probably this one of these guys, so class two gas giant, or possibly a class one. Now you can also tell by this image down to that um, silhouette there. Now I know from that silhouette that this is a class one Sadarsky gas giant. I know that because I've been trying to memorize it. So the Sadarsky class one gas giant right there. It doesn't say Sadarsky, but it will be. And uh, in just a moment here, let me wait until I get to a point where I can safely drop my speed. I'll do it here. 50% speed. Now what I have learned about those Sadarskys, the class ones have ammonia clouds. See right there. Class two have water clouds. Three are cloudless, etc. That's kind of what I've been learning about my Sadarskys. And uh, you can see here up at the top that uh, one in a purple circle. And that is, if you look up here to the upper right, a Sadarsky Class I gas giant. Okay. What else do we have? Are we done with this system? Looks like we got them all. Yep. Okay, let's just take in a view. Let's look at the view for a moment here. It's beautiful, isn't it? So this has got two rings, one metal rich and one icy. The icy one is the farther out one. The metal rich one would be those kind of brown rings there. Okay. 
It's absolutely beautiful when you get in close like this. And I can't wait to see what the new graphics are going to look like. Let's fly between the rings, shall we? Just for the fun of it. Ten percent. Ten percent. I don't know why it does that. You got a faint. Twenty percent. Twenty percent. We're just going to try and ease in here between the rings. I think there's a clear space there that will um, that we should be able to pass right through, but <clears throat> I don't want to heat dam any heat damage, so I'm going to take it nice and easy here. Thirty percent. Thirty percent. There's something going on with that. with uh, various different key commands here. Stop engines. Stop, Stop thrusters. thrusters. Next system. Selecting the next destination. Full speed ahead. Full speed ahead. Maximum velocity engaged. Make the jump. Preparing for jump. Let's see what our next system looks like. Something I've mentioned in other movies, but I'm not sure how many of them I'm going to put up. I always keep my finger on the X key on my keyboard when I make these jumps like this. Just in case. Stand by. Do the scan. Scanning planet. Whenever I give Astra a verbal command to make the jump, she's actually executing a special kind of jump which is particular to the uh, HCS voice packs. It's called a safety jump. And what that does is it uh, makes the jump and it also is supposed to set your throttle to zero so that when you arrive at the star you don't continue to rush in uh, where you could uh, you know burn up or get a lot of heat damage and I would say you know uh, you know one in 20 jumps uh, will happen where she for some reason does not stop uh, you know set your uh, your throttle to zero and so that's why I keep my finger on that X key, so I can stop it right away if she misses it. Alright. System map. 
System cartography. Nothing here. Close the map. Closing the map. Twenty five percent engaged. Next waypoint. Locking next star system. Now you'll notice the temperature uh, percent down uh, the lower one uh, uh, at about the uh, ten o'clock position on the radar down there up to the radar that uh, I like to keep uh, below 70 uh, once it gets above 70 I'll start getting a little bit of smoke a little bit of steam coming off my in front of my ship and uh, once it gets over 80 I'll start getting temperature heat warnings and experiencing a little bit of damage not usually much maybe one percent drop but uh, you don't want that. And then um, if you get up to around 100 or above, that's when you can really start doing serious harm from heat damage. And so what I typically do is after I've done a fuel scoop around a star, I will, um, and you'll see how I do this on the next system uh, when I do my scooping on it, I will wait until uh, that temperature percent drops down to at least a minimum of 51 percent. Um, at that point I can uh, tell it to make the next jump and I'll be safe and I'll be sure that when I arrive at the next star there's no possibility that I will experience overheating. And it's for that reason that after 12,000 light years of travel I've only got minimal amounts of damage. So. That's just a kind of a technique that I've been using and I thought I'd share that. Make the jump. Preparing for jump. Full speed ahead. Maximum flying. Has now been updated. Scan the star. Scanning planet. System map. System map. Ah, well, we can probably make a little bit here. Close the map. Closing the map. Ah, oh, you see that? Now that is. That happens because of my um, my joystick. It is tracking my mouse. Of course, I can stop that by uh, disabling head look. But uh, my mouse is now traveling across the screen. So <laughs> if I come over here and drag my mouse in, you'll see it's moving all by itself. That is caused by my um, my throttle for some reason. And so sometimes by adjusting my throttle and I just kind of moved it uh, up and back, it, it seemed to stabilize again. So there's something weird going on with my Thrustmaster here. Um, all right, so let's get back down here and... All right, so let's take a look over here now and see what our distances are before we do anything else. Okay, so all of those distances are reasonable. I can make all of those uh, uh, inner system um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, traveling within the system. I'm sorry, crying a blank. Um, I can do all of those easily now. So let's go ahead and hit the first one. Oh yeah, I want to check one other thing. System map. System cartography. All right, now the 
we now know because I've already scanned this AV here that this is a class M class M star just like the last one and remember that the distances between those I'm reminding myself more than you for class M between half a light second and 200 basically light seconds and we're going to be using these silhouettes to help identify what we're looking at when we're making the move but uh, this is 107 so that is within the habitable zone 196 it's on the outer edge of the habitable zone and now we're starting to leave the habitable zone here so most of these are going to be rocky or icy worlds. You can see those distances are just increasing. All right. So I would say then that the first, come in here, one, two. So the first two are the best candidates for terraformability and that's what we're going to find out about. Close the map. Close the map. But well, we're going to look at all of them anyway. Okay. System map. Let's see which one that shows. System map. System cartography. Okay, so it, sh it actually chose the first one. Close the map. Close the map. Closing the map. And uh, looking at that um, image there, that um, is a is that a rocky body or a high metal content? It's one of the two. Let's look and see. I think that's the one that I'm looking at right there, which could be either a rocky body or a high metal content. All right. Yeah, that's the same silhouette. So let's find out. This could be terraformable. You never know. 25 says. Remember, this is, um, I'm doing this and being so meticulous about it and describing everything because I'm trying to learn this stuff and this is how I do it. And so you're along for the ride, <laughs> and I hope you enjoy it. Full speed ahead. 80 body or a high metal content potentially terraformable world. Find out. 50%. Here in just a moment. Here it comes. Let's see what our data says. Our detailed surface scanner tells us. High metal content, but uh, not terraformable. All right, this next one, system map. System map. All right, and that one should also be within the habitable zone. Close the map. Close the map. And that image that we're looking at, that silhouette that we're looking at down there, that should be a uh, either high metal content right or rocky world as well oh no i take that back it's going to be a high metal content right right i know it from that blemish right there all right full speed ahead maximum velocity engaged so definitely high metal content potentially terrible
understood. Fifty percent. High metal content. This one, so this is going to be outside the habitable zone, and you, if you look at that image, you'll notice that there is a, let's see if I can point this out, um, probably the best place to point it out is here. These two, this rocky ice world and this high metal content have a characteristic that I find easy to identify. This kind of open Gulf of Mexico looking uh, uh, depression on the planet's surface. This one is ab above kind of the center line. This one is below the center line of the planet. So below is a rocky ice world, which is also happens to be a lesser value than the one in the upper half, which is a high metal content. It looks like we're just getting the scan data now. But it's outside the habitable zone, but it's still a high metal con uh, This is a rocky world, a rocky ice world. You can see up there, the RI. And those are worth 1,095 credits. You can see that over here. All right. So I'm trying to memorize those symbols as well. Full speed ahead. 100%. Okay, now this is going to be another rocky ice world. It's the same silhouette. Won't be as valuable. Again, uh, the rest of these uh, planets that I'm scanning out here are system map. System map. You'll notice that the only two that are landable are way out at the uh, distal end of this system, and these are moons, small moons. They are landable, so you could actually go there and gather minerals from these. All the rest even though it tells you what their mineral content may be, you can't get at it, at least not yet. Close the map. Closing the map. You can see that um, well, you can't even get at them because they're not landable, so it doesn't even tell you what they are. I take that back. Whoop. Okay, 50% engaged. All right, we're gonna have to come around. All right, as predicted, a rocky ice world. Full speed ahead. Maximum velocity engaged. And this is an ice planet. Pure and simple, just an ice planet. If you look at the silhouettes, it's an icy body. And you see that pattern there? That's how I know. Now there's another pattern which is almost like that for a rocky body. It has this little squiggle down here. That's how I kind of know where this has all these blotches here. Okay, so this will be an, uh, just a nice planet. And if it's landable, Captain's Log will show it up there on top by showing its relative gravity. It is gravity relative to Earth normal. Engaging now. 50%. Here comes our scan.
And as predicted, that is an icy body. It's not landable. Alright, onward. Full speed ahead. Maximize flight. Another icy body. Engaged. I make those speed adjustments using my numeric keypad, and I mapped those button presses to, um, to my Astra voice pack so that uh, you'll know what I'm doing. Okay, a nice swirl. Full speed ahead. One hundred percent. And this symbol is a class one Sadarsky gas giant. Tell that from here. There, class one gas giant, and it'll be Sadarsky. Engaging now, 50%. Set. I started uh, trying to memorize these silhouettes during yesterday's session. So, um, which I only put in about half a day yesterday, so within, um, you know, four hours in now, I guess, something like that, <clears throat> and I'm already starting to get these. Not well, but I'm starting to get them. You can see Sadarsky Class 1 Gas Giant. going to be an ice world. Indeed, and it's landable. You can see all of the different values up above that you might be able to gather on that world if, if you had an SRV, which I don't. <laughs> we'll speed ahead. Maximize life. I guess I don't really need that much speed here, but okay. There's another... Uh, we'll drop her speed. Twenty-five percent. Already scanned that one. All right, what do we have left? Just that one, huh? That's it. Okay, let's go get her. So this is going to be a um, a rocky body, right? It has that um, looking at the silhouette. Has that Gulf of Mexico looking thing in the lower half, and 
That's a rocky ice world, not just a rocky body, but a rocky ice world. This is a rocky body down here, a rocky ice world. Full speed ahead. Maximum velocity engaged. And this will be the last one in this system. And uh, just peeking over here, we can see that I've already made 277,140 credits, jumped through three systems and traveled 97 and a half uh, light years so far today. Scan 22 bodies, you can see that too. So, ED discovery for that information and uh, captain's log for this information. All of the um, graphic reference images that I've been using to help identify these different you know, planet uh, texture maps and silhouettes, I found those just by doing a uh, Google image search for, what did I put in, elite dangerous uh, planetary identification and uh, or planet identification and then I found all kinds of graphic images. I looked for some high resolution ones so I could zoom in on them um, and not lose any resolution, but that's basically where I got them all. They're easy enough to find and there, there's going to be new ones because they're going to be changing the, the appearance of planets. So uh, at some point uh, all those images will start being replaced by more updated ones. Though the, um, the good thing about this new version coming out this year is that these planetary uh, uh, image maps will be easier to use for identification purposes. I think that is being deliberately worked into those images, um, making it so that, the, scientifically speaking, the coloration of the planets should theoretically match the types of minerals that you're likely to find there. So that should actually make it easier once those are all learned, right? And there's a rocky ice world. That's just like it predicted. And we're done with this system. Next waypoint. So let's see the next system in route. Full speed ahead. Full speed ahead. Maximum velocity engaged. And make the jump. I think I'll do one more Preparing system and, the and then I'm going to take a little break here. I like to stretch my legs every, you know, every 45 minutes or hour. Checking systems now completed. Hull integrity is now All other systems are ignoring information. Cartography has now been updated. Scan the star. Scan it now. System map. System cartography. This is likely to be a low value system. I don't see anything here. This could be, if you look at these images here, these are most likely, um, well, they're going to be rocky bodies of some kind or another because of their proximity to the planet, uh, to the star. This is 23.91 light seconds. 42.5 and 78. <clears throat> and the star class is, survey says, a G class. So let's go take a look at that. Oh. Oh. I just 
listening to the Zoom in here G class. So anywhere from 351 to 872. And all of these were under 351, right? So these are going to be too close, so they're going to be too hot to, uh, to be able to support life, or at least water-based life. All the water will have uh, evaporated off. Now, over here, this is way out there, looks like uh, 1391. And when you come back and look at this for G class, that's way above that range. So we're not going to see any terraformables in this system at all. There will probably be um, a little bit of money to be made or credits to be made off of these. And I usually base the decision on whether or not to do that based on the, you know, the overall distances away from the star. So like the most distant one here is about, you know, 2600 uh, light seconds out, which isn't too bad actually. So I could go through and scan all of these uh, bodies if I want, just to, for vanity, vanity, vanity purposes, you know, just to have your name on them. The one thing that I'm not doing, by the way, is I've, I've set my, um, uh, my navigation filters so that I don't also inadvertently go and scan uh, asteroid belts. And the reason for that is, uh, right now I'm not interested in asteroid belts, I'm not doing any mining, and uh, obviously there's no combat to do out here, not that I really like doing that much anyway. So I just don't scan those. So, you know, we've got those distances, I could go through and scan all of these fairly quickly, just for vanity purposes, but we won't make much doing it. Or I could skip the system and move on to the next one. And I think what I'll do is take a break and uh, come back to this after my break. So I'm just going to pull my speed all the way down here. And you can see how the mouse is doing that weird thing. It's somehow doing that. All right, let's center that up. So, yeah, my throttle needs to be replaced. Oh, look at that. Still doing it. Stop doing thrusters. If I move it, it's going to screw with things here. Cutting engines, stop doing All right, so we're, we're actually doing a little scooping now. I don't like, I'm not going to leave it here sitting this close to a star. I'm going to go ahead and scoop this star and then uh, put, a little, put a little distance between it and us. Speed ahead. One hundred percent. We'll get out here a little ways. I think I'll just point it towards the next system. Next system in route. Locking system destination. All right, and we're far enough away from the star now that I'm not going to overheat. So I'll stop engines. Stop engines. Stop them with thrusters. I'm going to show you something. Um, sometimes I will com conclude a statement with, so I'll stop engines. And I'm going to show you how I could make it respond to that. If 
you're not familiar with HCF's voice packs, this would be a good opportunity to learn a little trick. These are all the various different um, spoken commands that it can respond to. I can search down here for stop engines, which is a command that already exists in there. And then I can um, I'll use this one here. I'm using it because that's where my X key is associated. And I know that uh, I've got so stop thrusters, stop everything, all engines off, right? And so I'm just going to insert one here. I'll just put it right here. It'll turn off cap locks. So I'll stop engines. Now, oh, so you got two S's there. So I'll stop engines. So um, if I leave a sufficient momentary pause, I should be able now to use that command. What we're going to do is we're going to find out. I'm going to come down here and relaunch that. into Elite Dangerous, center up. So let's put a little speed on here. Understood. 25%. So I'll stop engines. So I'll stop engines. So I'll stop engines. Cutting engines, stop here. Doesn't understand me very well, but it might work. My pronunciation may not be, uh, articulation may not be clear enough for voice attack to recognize. Okay, I'm going to pause. I'm going to take a break. I'll be back in a few minutes. But you won't notice that. All right, I'm back. Nope, there's one mic. All right, I'm back. And... Um, I think that uh, this movie has probably uh, demonstrated all the techniques that I use, so I'm going to uh, end it. I just want to make one correction here. I said I had a Thrustmaster. This is actually a, uh, a, a, a Satec X52 Pro uh, system that I'm using right now. I'll put up a picture here so you can see what uh, my system looks like from where I sit. And I'm going to... Uh, bid farewell here. Uh, the problem I'm having with the X-52, by the way, is that I've been using it now for phew, almost 1,300 hours. So it's starting to wear out. I'm going to have to replace it. Anyway, I'm just going to say farewell. I'll let you all uh, make your own travels. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, brief tutorial on techniques and tools. And, uh, well, maybe I'll see you in space. <laughs>